Hello everybody, my name is Miss Amy from the Louisville Free Public Library. I'm so glad you joined us today. We're going to be doing an online story time once again until we can safely meet at the libraries. Uh, today I thought we could read some books and sing some songs about rainy days and clouds. Today when I'm filming it is super sunny and hot outside so a rainstorm would feel really good today. Um, I like sunny days normally but rain, a rainy day is good to stay inside and read a book. So I thought today we could read some books about rain, sing some songs, and we have a fun craft for you too. So I'm glad you're with us and let's get started with a welcome song to welcome everybody. I thought we could sing an easy song about rain falling down. I'm going to be teaching you some sign language today. Sign language is good. Um, it's a way to talk without using your voice to express your feelings. Um, we teach babies sign language when they don't know how to talk yet and they can tell us if they want more food. Um, it's really good a way to express yourself and I just like learning new signs. So we're going to learn today our first song. We're just going to learn about rain. So you're going to take both of your hands and your fingers up and you're just going to make some rain falling down with your fingers. And this is a super easy song called Called rain rain falling down I'll do it slow once and then we'll do it kind of fast all together it goes like this rain rain falling down falling to the ground pitter patter pitter patter what a lovely sound and that's it that was easy let's try it one more time let's use our sign language for rain put our fingers up in the air make it rain and we'll go a little bit faster here we go Rain, rain, falling down, falling to the ground. Pitter patter, pitter patter, what a lovely sound. You sounded great. Thank you for singing with me. All right, you guys, for our first story today about rain and clouds, I thought we could read one of my favorite books by author Eric Carl. The name of this book is called Little Cloud. You can see the little cloud on the front page, and we're going to see some really cool things that clouds can do up in the air. I think you're going to like this book a lot. So if you'll read with me, this is called Little Cloud. The clouds drifted slowly across the sky and Little Cloud trailed behind. See the big clouds up here? Here's Little Cloud all the way at the bottom. The clouds pushed upward and away, but Little Cloud pushed downward and touched the tops of the houses and the trees. The clouds moved out of sight and Little Cloud changed into a giant cloud. Look how big Little Cloud became. Now Little Cloud changed into a sheep. Sheep and clouds sometimes look alike. They're both white and fluffy. I didn't know clouds could change shapes. That's so cool. <gasps> Little Cloud changed into an airplane. Little Cloud often saw airplanes flying through the clouds. Let's see what else Little Cloud does. <gasps> oh no. Little Cloud changed into a shark. Little Cloud once saw a shark through the waves of the ocean. Ooh, Little Cloud changed into two trees. Little Cloud liked the way trees never moved and they stayed in one place. Trees stay where they are, clouds move around. Little Cloud changed into a rabbit. Little Cloud loved to watch rabbits dash across the meadows. Then little, a little Cloud changed into a hat. Why did he change into a hat? Because <gasps> Little Cloud changed into a clown. And clowns need a hat. Wouldn't that be amazing to see a cloud in the sky that looked like a clown? The other clouds drifted back. They huddled close together. Little Cloud, Little Cloud, they called, come back. Little Cloud drifted toward the other clouds. I bet you know what's going to happen. <gasps> then all the clouds changed into one big cloud and it started to rain. And that was the story of Little Cloud by Eric Carle. Thank you for reading with me. All right, I thought we could learn another song about rain and clouds and learn some more signs, some sign language. So I'm going to teach you the signs first, and then we'll sing our song together. And we'll always do it slow first and then a little bit faster together. So we're going to learn a couple of 
couple of signs. We're going to learn a sign for umbrella. So you're going to put both of your fists together and then you're going to make the motion like you're opening an umbrella. So fist together and you open it right up, okay? And then we already know the sign for rain. We're going to use our fingers and make the rain come down. I've got two more signs for you. We're going to make a sign for thunder. Thunder sounds angry, so we're going to shake our fists and make an angry face. And then for lightning, we're going to make a zigzag in the sky with our finger. All right? So we've got umbrella, rain, thunder, and lightning. Pretty easy, right? We're going to sing, come under my umbrella. So I'm going to start slow, and then we'll do it again fast, okay? Goes like this. Come under my umbrella, umbrella, umbrella. Come under my umbrella, it's starting to rain. With thunder and lightning and thunder and lightning. Come under my umbrella, it's starting to rain. What do you think, pretty easy? You wanna try it one more time? for repetition make us learn it all right let's put our umbrella up here we go come under my umbrella 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 come under my umbrella it's starting to rain with thunder and lightning and thunder and lightning come under my umbrella it's starting to rain good job you guys thank you all right, you guys, I thought we could read another book about clouds and some of the shapes that make, they make up in the sky. And then we have a craft that goes along with this. So this book is an older book, but it's one of my favorites. It, it's called It Looked Like Spilt Milk. Because if you think about it, maybe some of the clouds up in the sky look like a milk spill, right? So but we're going to see some fancy shapes up in the sky. The author of this book is named Charles Shaw, wrote the, wrote the words for the book. And let's see what's going on in this book. It's called It Looked Like Spilt Milk. Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. Sometimes it looked like a rabbit, but it wasn't a rabbit. Sometimes it looked like a bird, but it wasn't a bird. I bet you know what it is. Sometimes it looked like a tree, but it wasn't a tree. Sometimes it looked like an ice cream cone, but it wasn't an ice cream cone. Sometimes it looked like a flower, but it wasn't a flower. Sometimes it looked like a pig. Can you make a pig sound? Oink, oink, oink. But it wasn't a pig. Sometimes it looked like a birthday cake, but it wasn't a birthday cake. Sometimes it looked like a sheep because it's white and fluffy, but it wasn't a sheep. Sometimes it looked like a great horned owl. How cool. But it wasn't a great horned owl. Sometimes it looked like a mitten, but it wasn't a mitten. <gasps> Sometimes it looked like a squirrel, but it wasn't a squirrel. Sometimes it looked like an angel, but it wasn't an angel. And sometimes it looked like spilt milk. Does it look like somebody spilled some milk? It does. But it wasn't spilt milk. What was it? It was just a cloud in the sky. So maybe this afternoon, if there's some clouds up in the sky, lay down on the grass and look up and see if you can see some fun shapes. Thank you for reading with me. I've got one more fun song about rain and sun, and it's going to um, incorporate some sign language, so I thought I could teach you a couple more signs. I learned this song from watching Barney a million years ago, so you might know this song already. It's called Oh Mr. Sun, and I'm going to teach you some sign language that goes with it, and then we'll sing it together. So to make a sun for sign language, we're going to take our pointer finger, make a circle in the air, and then have it shine down on us. So sun sun. And then when we're going to sing shine, we're just going to have the sun shine on us with our fingers waving down. 
the sun is going to hide behind a tree. So here's our tree and we're going to have the sun hide behind the tree. We're going to talk about little children. We're going to pat little children's heads. These are the small children. We're going to tell the sun to please come out. Please for sign languages, we're rubbing our chest. And then when we say we want to play in the sun, we're going to take our pinky and our thumb and we're going to wiggle them back and forth and that means play. So we're going to sing, Mr. Sun, please shine down on me. The sun is going to hide behind the tree. These small children are asking you to please come out so we can play with you. Does that sound good? Let's do it to all together. I'll go kind of slow and then you can watch the video over again if you want to do it again. It's a lot of fun and I know you're going to know the song when I start singing. All right, it goes like this. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, hiding behind the tree. These small children are asking you to please come out so we can play with you. Oh, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. So whenever it's a rainy day, just sing that song and maybe Mr. Sun will peek his head out. Thank you for singing with me. All right, for our last book about rain and clouds, I'm going to read you one of my all-time favorite books. The name of the book is called Chalk, but it has a dinosaur on the front, so I'm not sure why it's called Chalk. We're going to have to read to find out. Let me show you the whole cover, because the cover kind of gives us an idea what's going on. So I see a green dinosaur on the cover. He's not real. Do you see his handlebars? This is a little toy at the playground. You could sit on the seat and kind of rock back and forth. And if you look in the dinosaur's mouth, there's a bag hanging from his mouth. And inside the bag, if you can see, there's some pieces of sidewalk chalk, which I know you all have at home, sidewalk chalk, everybody does. So that's why the name of the book is called Chalk. We're going to read this together. Actually, we're going to look at the pictures together because another cool thing about this book is there's no words. It's called a wordless picture book. So we're going to have to look at the pictures and the clues to find out what's going on. I'm going to help you a bit, though. The name or the uh, author of this book and the illustrator, he wrote uh, the words, even though there are no words, and he drew the pictures is Bill Thompson. He also has another book called The Typewriter and a book about dinosaur fossils called Fossil. And those are all in our collection. They're super great so please check them out. So let's uh, look at the pictures and find out what's going on in the book called Chalk. Ooh, right away I noticed something, you guys. Do you see the raindrops coming down from the sky? I think it's raining in this book. And I know you know, if you draw a picture outside on the sidewalk and then it rains, do you know what's gonna happen to your picture? That's right, it's gonna wash away because the chalk washes away in the rain. So I wonder how they're gonna play with chalk in this book if it's raining, let's find out. Here's our title page. If you look really close, you can see the raindrops coming down at the playground. All right, here we go, I'm super excited. Here's our three friends and they came to the playground. They wanted to play outside, but they've got their raincoat on and their rain boots, it's raining. It's not going to be a good day to play at the playground. But they do see that uh, special bag hanging from the dinosaur's mouth. And they open it up and they see some pieces of sidewalk chalk. It's pretty cool. So even though it's raining, they want to play with the chalk. So the girl with the pink hat takes out a yellow piece of chalk and look what she draws on the playground. She draws the sun. I think she wants it to be sunny outside. That's why she drew the sun. Do you want to see something really cool? <gasps> Look what's happening, you guys. The sun is coming out of her picture and it's going up into the sky. She drew a picture of the sun and it became real. It's going up in the sky, that's amazing. And there goes the clouds and here comes the sunshine. How neat would it to be to draw something and it comes to life? Her friend really wants to try. She's very excited. She takes out the orange piece of chalk. And if you look close, you can see she's drawing some butterflies. Do you see what's starting to happen? 
butterflies are coming out from her picture. Pretty monarch butterflies up in the sky. She drew the butterflies and they became real too. Everything they draw is coming to life. They're so excited. Butterflies! The boy wants to try. He takes out a green piece of chalk. Can you all see what he's drawing? Uh-oh, you guys, he's drawing a dinosaur. I hope it just stays make-believe. <gasps> but it did not. There's a great big T-Rex coming to life on the playground. The dinosaur says, roar, and the kids go, ah, because there's a dinosaur chasing them at the playground. He's chasing them around and around. The kids are trying to get away. They're going up into the playground equipment. The boy slides down the slide. His friend climbs up the steps. They are still running away from that giant dinosaur. How are they going to get away from him? He's so big. Maybe if they get in the tunnel in the middle, he won't be able to fit in there. He's so large. Let's see what happens. Ooh, that's what happened. They went into the middle of the slide and now they're safe from the dinosaur, but he's got them trapped. How are they gonna get out? They can't go this way. They can't go the other way. The dinosaur will get them just like that. They do something really cool. Do you wanna see what happens? The boy brought in a white piece of chalk and inside the slide, he's making a rain cloud and some rain. Do you have any guesses why he's drawing some rain? Do you remember we talked about if you draw something out of chalk and then the rain comes down, it washes away? Well, we drew the dinosaur out of chalk, so maybe he hopes a rainstorm will come and wash the big scary dinosaur away. Let's see if that's right. Oh, I think that's what's happening. The sun went away and here come the rain clouds and the dinosaur looks up and says, oh no. And here comes the rain and look, the dinosaur is washing away. He was drawn out of chalk, so he's just washing back down to the ground. That was good thinking. And now all that's left is just a green puddle of chalk. That was a little bit scary for those kids, so they're gonna put that bag back where they found it. They don't wanna take that home. That was some special chalk. So they are gonna go home and tell their grown-ups that they saw a real dinosaur at the playground. Do you think the grown-ups are gonna believe them? I don't know, but we saw it. We saw it in the book. So that was the end of chalk. Do me a favor, you guys. If you see a bag of chalk at the playground, please play with it, but just draw fun things like ice cream or pizza or unicorns. Do not draw a dinosaur, because I'm afraid of dinosaurs. I do not want a dinosaur chasing me. Thank you for reading chalk. All right, so we read a couple of fun books about clouds changing shapes in the sky. We read Little Cloud together and we read It Looked Like Spilt Milk. So I wanted to teach you a fun, easy craft that you can do at home. You probably have all these ingredients at home, so this is super inexpensive um, and it's a good way to spend an afternoon. If it is raining outside, you can do a fun craft on the inside. So we are gonna make some fluffy white paint um, to paint some clouds. And we're gonna need some, I chose blue construction paper but you can use whatever color construction paper you want. I just chose blue for the sky. We're gonna need some regular um, glue, not clear glue. The white glue works better. We're gonna need some shaving foam, not the gel. The foam works better. And then just an old paper plate or even just a couple of paper towels. And then you're gonna need something to paint with. So you can use a paintbrush if you want to, but I like to paint with Q-tips because you can make a big mess and throw them away at the end and they're still pretty skinny to paint with. Um, so you can use paintbrush, Q-tips, paper plate, clear or white glue, not clear glue, and shaving foam, and then a piece of paper, preferably something sturdy like cardstock, but it can be regular paper. Um, and then that's all you need to get started, so let's make some fluffy white paint. So the way to make your puffy paint is you're gonna use equal parts of glue and shaving cream, but the good thing is you don't have to measure. You can just kinda guess, because we do this all the time at the library and it always turns out great. So if you're making this for a lot of kiddos, I would put a lot. If you're you're just doing it for one or two kiddos, maybe just kind of make a little bit at a time. So you're gonna shake up your shaving foam and then you're just gonna spray it on your plate. 
And then after that, we're gonna add some white glue. It doesn't matter which one you add first. If you add the glue first, it does not matter at all. There's no wrong way to do this, you guys. All right, so that kind of looks about even to me. So here comes the fun part. We're gonna swirl it together with our Q-tip. And remember, you can do this with a paintbrush too. You'll just wash your paintbrush at the end because you don't want glue drying on it. So the shaving foam kind of makes your paint puffy and then the glue makes it stick to the paper. So you kind of want equal parts both. And then once you think you have it a pretty good consistency, you're ready to draw. So let's take a piece of blue paper. And again, you can use whatever color paper you want. And I'm gonna use my clean Q-tip because this was my stirring Q-tip. And this is the fun part. You can just create, you can make little swirls if you want to. You might want to play around with it first before you decide on your final design because it doesn't really paint like paint. It kind of takes a couple times to go over. That was my attempt at a swirl. It's not turning out so good. Let's just do maybe a basic heart shape. I'm trying to make the outline of the heart and then I'll fill it in. And whatever you want to draw is totally up to you. You could do a lot of these. This is so inexpensive. You could spend all afternoon doing five or six and it would cost your grown-ups zero dollars. All right, so I kind of have an outline. So now what you want to do is you want to fill it in. The more puffy paint you use, the puffier your picture's going to be. So if you want it really, really, really puffy, just really put it on there. Don't hold back. It's not going to be ready right away. It's going to take some time to dry, so you're going to have to have some patience. So after you make your design, you're going to want to put your design up like on a cabinet, up where your sister can't get to it because we don't want this in their mouths. And then you might have to wait two or three hours for everything dry enough for you to touch it, okay? So I've got a little bit of a heart going on here, but you take your time, think of some fun things to draw. And then when you're satisfied with your shape, you'll put it away to dry. And then I made some designs yesterday. I made a tree, because we read a book where a cloud looked like a tree. And then I made a heart. So you can kind of see most, I mean it's dry, and most of it just kind of turned into paint, but where the parts where I really put a lot of puffy paint on, um, it's still puffy to the touch. So if you were here and you were touching with your fingers, you would feel it's nice and soft and puffy. All right? So um, do as many of these as you want to. If you do some, I would love to see your artwork. So send us your pictures, put your name on it, write down what it is. I would love to see these. Um, super fun and easy and inexpensive crafts that you can do at home on a rainy day. Thank you guys for helping me. All right, I thought I could end with the same song that we opened with just to say goodbye until next time. So we're going to use the sign language for rain and we're just going to sing rain, rain is falling down. Okay, it goes like this. Rain, rain falling down, falling to the ground. Pitter patter, pitter patter, what a lovely sound. Thank you so much for reading and singing with me today. Until next time, keep reading.